The first model of prayer according to scripture in no particular order is called praying in the spirit. What you call deploying the prayer language of tongues. Praying in the spirit. Generally speaking, praying in the spirit is not limited to praying in tongues. But classically speaking, every time we talk about praying in the spirit, it is safe to assume the Bible is talking about praying using the prayer language of tongues. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 15. This is the first prayer model that I want to introduce to us as an advantage to all believers. It's been a bone of contention for many years and especially among many religious circles as to the value or the necessity of sustaining the ability to pray in tongues this has been and sadly remains a, a you know a, a reason for argument but paul speaks here and he says what is it then he says i will pray with the spirit please follow carefully then he says i will pray with the understanding also clearly he tells you now that they do not mean the same thing he said i will pray in the spirit or with the spirit and then i will pray with my understanding the prayer language is not the same as the gift of diverse kinds of tongues this is where i think there's been an age-long confusion hallelujah because paul said in first corinthians when you read chapter 12 down to 13 and 14 he says do all speak with tongues and so most people will mistaken that to mean that the prayer language of tongues is not for everyone remember when you approach scripture contextually he was talking about the gifts of the spirit and he made a statement there that the gift of the spirit is to profit withal that means the gift of the spirit is not necessarily for personal edification it empowers the individual to be a blessing to the church are we together now when he gets to chapter 14 now he says chapter 14 and verse 2 he says please give it to us verse 2 and then verse 4 first corinthians chapter 14 he that speaketh in an unknown tongue watch this now he speaketh not unto men immediately that tells you it is not part of the gift of the spirit he's talking about because all the gift of the spirit is to profit withal but this now he's speaking about tongues as a strategy for personal edification he says he speaks unto god for no man understandeth him how be it he speaketh in the spirit and the spirit he speaketh mysteries very powerful hallelujah every believer that does not engage praying in the spirit will rob himself or herself will rob their destinies of many 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 dimensions of the blessings that come from prayer what is praying in the spirit or what is praying in tongues you are allowing the spirit of god please listen you are allowing the spirit of god to use your vocal cords your faculties to express prayer in a language you may not learn and understand how be it your confidence is that the spirit of god is number one called the spirit of truth so that even though you do not understand what you are saying you trust according to scripture that he's praying out through you the will of god are we together now and so when you begin to pray in the spirit it does not make sense to you looks like you're praying gibberish however the bible tells you that we do not know how to pray for as we ought to that means it is a limitation in all men we are limited we do not even understand what our problems are you can be praying for headache whereas the problem is a demonic attack and so the bible says that god in knowing this deficiency in men he supplemented that by granting us access to this prayer language hallelujah so when you engage in the prayer language it is important for you to know that you're not just fulfilling a religious ritual you are allowing the spirit of god to take advantage of your faculties and to express the will of god in prayer you can trust everything that is said in the prayer language because it is the holy spirit praying through you making intercession through you hallelujah 
and i remember many years ago when you know before god brought us to this level i used to have the time to minister the baptism of the holy spirit over people one by one and most times people's confusion was the fact that they thought their their tongues were not sounding very professional what is ba 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 and what have you mean that thing is really that doesn't really sound intelligent now that's the problem with men because everything we believe must come through the sieve of intellect and the bible says a natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit the prayer language now you see in english every time you want to tell me to step forward you will say come so c-o-m-e always means step forward doesn't necessarily have any other meaning but in the realm of the spirit just because your mind thinks you are repeating the same word it doesn't mean you are saying the same thing do you understand this now you need to understand this now so you the problem is the conflict between intellect and spirit communication i give you an example of spirit communication two in the bible in fact number one is called mene menetekel ufersen did you ever read of something like that look at the interpreting the, the interpretation of just just four letter words to the intellect mene alone means oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting my god so imagine what you say in 15 minutes of prayer that was not a babylonian language it was a spirit communication it took daniel he was being in, he had to interpret it can i give you another one eloi eloi lamak sabak tanai the bible says which being interpreted it had to be interpreted it's not a heavenly language it was not a jewish language eloi eloi lamak sabak tanai was jesus communicating the bible says which being interpreted did you see that which being interpreted nobody on earth would have been able to decipher what he said my god my god why hast thou forsaken me so don't when you pray in the spirit don't limit yourself to the intelligence of it this man's tongue sounds nice it looks like he's the real holy spirit walking with this guy for mine i don't know what kind of spirit took over me with this nonsense i'm speaking the moment you allow the devil to do that you have been robbed of an opportunity please look at me how many of you laugh you just laughed now eh you started laughing as a baby question who taught you who gave you an opportunity to rehearse how many of you cry have you ever taken note of the way you laugh or the way you cry have you ever been embarrassed by how you laugh or cry it's the same thing they are all languages laughter is a language crying is a language are you getting it now so when people say how can i communicate something i've never learned teach them that they laughed without rehearsal they cried without rehearsal hmm. scriptural prayer models pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there are many things that happen at once when we pray in the spirit there's no time to be able to go into all that detail we are just taking this at an elementary level boy i will tell you three things that happens when you pray in the spirit number one you build power you build power acts chapter 1 and verse 8 you shall receive power acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 they receive tongues jesus never said you will receive tongues when the holy spirit comes he said you will receive power but in acts chapter 2 what they received was a prayer language that means there is a relationship between praying in the spirit and accessing spiritual power hallelujah if i tell you you will receive five thousand dollars and by the time you meet me i give you a card it should tell you immediately that there is a relationship between the promise i made and something within that card am i right on that you don't throw away the card because most likely that card contains within it or is connected to an account that is worth five thousand dollars if you throw away the account because you are looking for five thousand dollars cash you may have thrown away your money so when he says you will receive power and what you receive is a prayer language it means there is a relationship between engaging in that prayer language and accessing or releasing spiritual power do you agree with me on that 
the bible lets us know furthermore that when we pray in the spirit we give the holy spirit an opportunity to draw into our lives the knowledge of the will of god that no man knows what is in the heart of man except the spirit that is in that man so also no man knows what is in the heart of god except the spirit of god so as we pray we grant the holy spirit an opportunity to buy into the mind of the father and pull to your consciousness what the will of god is part time and per season for your life this is very powerful when we pray in the spirit among the many things we receive is the knowledge of the will of god concerning the various matters in our lives now the truth is that you may not find the answer to your problem directly from scripture you may not find your name you may not find in scripture whether you should live in the island or in the mainland are we together you may not find in scripture whether you should get into a dry cleaning business or a restaurant you may not directly find that but as you pray in the spirit among the many things that happens to you is that the holy spirit is able to buy into the wisdom of god and to communicate to you that which is consistent with your blueprint part time it is risky to take many destiny defining decisions without praying in the spirit it will always look like you are correct till you find out you veered away from the will of god for many of us, the reason why we keep recycling seasons of pain is because we have not taken advantage of this provision. Are we together? Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Let me jump to the second model. Are we learning already? Is this helping someone's prayer life? So the next time the devil comes with his tricks to waste your time while you pray, you rebuke him and say if you did not come to me while i was laughing then don't come to me while i'm praying because it's a business between me and the father are we together now number two the second model of of prayer that many believers do not understand they do not even know it is prayer is declaring scripture in prayer my goodness my god declaring scripture in prayer not just quoting uh -uh. there is a difference and i'm going to show you now just because you are quoting scripture does not mean you are carrying out this model of prayer it is a powerful model of prayer to declare scripture psalms 107 2 and 3 please my god declaring scripture in prayer the bible says let the redeemed of the lord please help me say so what is the platform that allows them to say so let the redeemed of the lord say so what is this model of prayer please watch this so you take scripture and personalize it you put yourself in the experience of that word and you declare it are we together now the bible says to bring forth your strong reasons to bring forth present your cause your case said the lord and he says bring forth your strong reason don't just say god are you not my father you can't be watching me like that that's not prayer that's not prayer let me show you how this model of prayer works that you can stand in the place of prayer and you are making prophetic declarations the lord is my light and my salvation i am blessed going out and blessed coming in this is you praying now are we together you become the prophet of your destiny at that point and as you are speaking you know because the bible says ecclesiastes i believe uh, chapter 8 let's try 3 or 4 that should be verse 4 please where the word of a king is did i get okay where the word of a king is is that in your bible there is what help me say power one more time where the word of a king is remember revelations 5 10 we have been made unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on earth that means every time you make these declarations you are not just speaking to the air you are programming realities over your destiny believe this i am blessed in the city and blessed in the country 
I obey the Lord and I serve him. Therefore, I enjoy prosperity, my days in prosperity, my years in pleasure. This is you declaring scripture. A thousand fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Are we together now? Yes. They may come against me in one way, but they will scatter in seven ways. I am the delight of the Lord. I shall not die, but live and declare. This is a prayer model. It's a prayer model. Most believers do not have a rich prayer life because they do not even know. Here's how the average believer prays. Father, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end and all. And you, you see that they don't believe what they're saying. Now, imagine you are God and somebody just comes, you are the Lion of Dry of Judah, the Rose of Sharon, and the King of... What is Rose of Sharon? What is King of Kings? Now, I'm not being insulted, please. Don't, don't misunderstand me. And at the end of it, all that preamble is to really get to a point where they can bring down that pain and say, God, let's talk. This rent. <laughs> you sent manna from heaven. They wasted it. You sent another one. I'm only asking you for rent in jesus name and the person will live actually believing that he prayed no you didn't pray you lamented agreed you cried agreed you were superstitious agreed but it was not prayer are we together because i have set my affection on him ah look if you the the key to manifesting this model is that your word bank must be full if you do not understand scripture you cannot pray this model because this model is a direct lifting from scripture you just put yourself there and make that declaration if you are poor in the word you cannot pray this model of prayer hallelujah this is the kind of the model of prayer that you use to counter negative speakings did you get that now that someone looks at you and says everybody in this unit is a useless person immediately a scripture wells from you it's not that you have to reply that person immediately because there's wisdom remember so someone looks at you and says, the way you are looking sick like this, as if you are going to die soon. A scripture just comes up. And the moment you find a chance, no, I, I shall not die. I shall not die. They are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Are we together now? Yes. The advantage of this prayer is that it keeps reinforcing that truth to your consciousness. Because generally speaking, speaking reinforces the reality of thoughts. This is psychology. You agree with me on that? That any time you speak a thing, the reality is still is crystallized in your mind again. You get up in the morning and you celebrate God. This is the day the Lord has made. Who made the day? Not the Lord and Satan. The Lord had made. Therefore I rejoice. Anything fighting my joy today in the name of Jesus I come against you. On account of that declaration. That means my joy was factored in the making of that day. So you find two people who leave their homes in the morning. Please listen. On the streets of Lagos. Someone leaves their home rejoicing and you say how are you? They say I'm fine. They are rejoicing. They get to the office and they say listen. Um we decided to choose one person to send abroad and you are the person who came to our mind and someone is frowning because a merry heart do it good like medicine are we together now but that a broken spirit can dry up the bones you get up in the morning and you declare in the name of jesus joy joy unspeakable full of glory no one disturbs my joy and peace today you have already frustrated the person satan has positioned and every time God sees that something good is coming, you notice things begin to happen around your life, your office, you are angry, your son wants to do something, you are almost going to slap him. No, it's an attack. Because it is with joy we reap. Are we together now? Scriptural prayer models. Number two, joy. 
some of you right now as you are here god has been telling you cheer up since yesterday what god sent from heaven has refused to arrive do you know why because gloominess and sadness has created an embargo you believe what i'm teaching you yes i am the head and not the tail please say it Amen. believe what you are saying say i'm the head and not the tail Amen. yes sir the bible says you are above and not beneath and while you are saying that because satan is a deceiver he will come and stand around the corridors of your mind and say with that rent issue what did you say again the head hear yourself and you say it again i am the head and not the tail and then you can add while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal temporal the court case temporal the issue of shame and reproach temporal still looking for the school fees of your son but temporal yes the visa was declined but temporal temporal but the things that are unseen unseen not unreal unseen not unreal just because you cannot see it does not mean it doesn't exist hallelujah the works of my hands blessed god gives you a store you don't go there and start quarreling and say this lady today is your last day if you don't mm -mm, it's too you you are already frustrating your path to growth i'm showing you how to participate with heaven you step into your mall or your store excuse yourself for a minute and close the door in the name of jesus the bible says everything i do is blessed is it in your bible whatsoever he doeth help me whatsoever he doeth you step into that store lay your hands and say in the name of jesus god is bringing strategic people relationships are coming to me today not useless relationships destiny defining relationships troublemakers are far from my destiny god is bringing the right people you get up and you expect favor the bible says his messes are new every morning have you received today's own declaring scripture declaring scripture declaring scripture you get up and you find yourself that you you were somewhere you fell into a ditch and you died bring yourself back to life by waking up <laughs> that death in the dream should end there are we together and then you don't just get up and say god forbid god forbid is not prayer god forbid based on what you see the things that we keep saying that makes our prayer ineffective god forbid i know you are sincere but the realm of the spirit does not work like that there has to be a basis based on what the bible said i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing who is god speaking to this morning he said choose life choose life one of the ways you choose life is to verbalize it if i tell you choose between this flower and this monitor one of the ways you by pointing and then you can say i choose the flower loud enough for me to hear you you cannot tell me you choose the flower then i give you this it means i'm a deceiver god says choose life choose life choose life when men say there is a casting down my declaration in the name of the lord and add your children in that confession that they shall say there is a lifting up i'm challenging every mother here don't keep quiet this is not the time to keep quiet satan is looking for families he would destroy looking for men that you will shred their testimonies do you know that the spirit of depression the first thing that the spirit of depression does is it brings you to a point of silence find out people who are depressed they've come to a point where they've given up on life and they just keep quiet sir you know there is a way and it just keeps quiet after five minutes he says that person is almost dying but thou oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou, oh Lord, art a shield for me. 
my glory that lifts her up of my head. Sing it one more time. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the Many of you have heard me say, there are some of you, the only thing that comes out of your mouth is why is it that everybody hates me? First, you are a liar because it's impossible to be hated by everybody. You may have heard me say that even Satan is not hated by everybody. There are people who know that he's the devil and still love him. There are wives that agree to spend their lives with terrorists. Am I right on that? They know the person is an assassin, is a killer. And yet he went and met her parents and the lady was willing. Everybody cannot hate you. Is the devil deceiving you? And what you need is one person sent by God who loves you. One. How many? One. I tell you, one. How many people had to love Joseph to become a prime minister? Ten? Fifteen? One. 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 So when you get up in the morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, there has to be someone who delights in my son to hold his hands and lift him to be great. I'm calling that person forth by prophecy. When Jesus was born as a little baby, there were wise men that saw the stars. Is that in your Bible? The Bible says they took gifts of gold, of frankincense and myrrh, and they came to greet baby Jesus, not entrepreneur Jesus, not savior Jesus. declaring scripture declaring scripture declaring scripture go back home on your way home even if it's only one scripture you know weary life with that scripture speak it until it becomes a reality declare ye that thou might test be justified there are no assumptions in the spirit let me tell you the truth if i did not understand this model i submit to you by the integrity of god's word i would have died a long time ago a long time ago don't just accept everything that comes to your life build a garrison with the word and don't wait for someone to just speak it over you you are principally the first prophet of your life principally hallelujah the bible says i will multiply them they shall not be few i will glorify them they shall not be small speak that over your business the bible says in psalm 112 parents this is a women conference blessed is the man that feared the lord who delighted greatly in his commands his seed shall be mighty as a mother you would declare i didn't give birth to pain i is not my child that will send me to my grave in the name of jesus every spirit trying to turn this boy to become a disappointment i am not discouraged i look beyond that stubborn child and i see a giant rising because the bible says his seed shall be mighty see it shall be mighty we see it shall be mighty are we together you declare over this church that it's not only spiritually vibrant men and women who arise but people who are great people of means and people of capacity genesis 17 and verse 6 i will make thee exceeding fruitful he says give it to us please and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee not kings shall come to you does that sound like what comes out of a woman so what you are holding called a baby is a king royalty greatness you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory So prayer model number one let's do a quick recap praying in the spirit praying in tongues number two declaring scriptures in prayer can i give you number three number three is called the prayer of inquiry hmm. this is a very powerful model please follow carefully the prayer of inquiry 
that means you can in the place of prayer the purpose of that prayer is not to declare the purpose of that prayer is to come back with answers the prayer of inquiry first samuel chapter 30 please and verse 8 first samuel chapter 30 is god helping someone's prayer life let's read it together please if you can see are you ready one to read please and david inquired at the lord saying shall i pursue after this troop shall i overtake them and he answered him pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all this is the kind of prayer to pray before you take major sensitive destiny defining decisions the prayer of inquiry do you know why this prayer is important because the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man believers listen to me there is a way that seemeth right unto a preacher there is a way that seemeth right unto a young graduate there is a way that seemeth right unto a nigerian but the bible says the end you can see it looking very attractive i hope you know satan does not use evil alone to destroy when he uses evil and you can detect it he will use good for instance a visa on your passport a visa on your passport does not necessarily mean god wants you to relocate now there's nothing wrong with relocating are we together but I'm saying that there are many times Satan will use good things to destroy you. Sometimes an employment letter can be the worst thing that would have happened to you. Hmm. What God intends to give you is not good against evil, it's life. Because both good and evil came from the same tree. So there are times that Satan will use a lot of good. If he sees that you are fighting bad friends, he will bring good friends who can destroy you. The most important thing is that you are destroyed. Are we together? When Satan came to Jesus, how many of you know that what he used for his temptation, the raw material for tempting Jesus was, it is written. He did not tell him, go and take a bottle of some alcohol that the Roman soldiers take. No, he came and said, it is written. He shall put his angels charge. I mean, if you hear someone quoting scripture that much, you want that person to be your friend. And yet the name of the person quoting it is Satan. So just because something carries the carriage of good, I pray that God is helping someone this morning. There are many good things that are destructive to your destiny. I tell you sincerely many good things you must sustain the power to reject both good and bad things the programming that makes you frown on all at only bad things you would have given yourself cheaply to satan weapons are fashioned and fashioning is a product of study what is this person what does this person want at this point oh you are so lonely you need a good friend and satan will bring somebody who is sincere but not wise that person becomes a reason for your destruction everything you tell that person he or she will go and tell everybody because he brought somebody who has not worked with the weak the weakness of managing relationships the person is not evil the person is just not wise oh we are still trusting god for a child we say really okay let's pray and then the next thing you see another person sending you a text in the night that which you are looking for that i've heard about may god give you and you're saying where did this come from now <laughs> good things can destroy you many good things have destroyed destiny many many do you believe what you are hearing should i pursue should i overtake you see sometimes when all the variables are there chances are excellent that you may develop pride and not need god again the certificate is there my uncle is now a senator which is an advantage oh my my sister in america told me you just submit this there's an assurance that in one month your passport will be stamped at that point it doesn't make sense to ask god should i pursue because you suspect what if he says no 
in the presence of all these great opportunities do you know why many people don't ask god for answers they suspect that he will reject it and you are you are mostly right because the moment you start asking god that means you are saying i am willing to walk with whatever you tell me the way we fight god is proof that we were not serious about asking him should i pursue you've already prepared the horse you've dressed the horse you've climbed on the chariot you are ready to go the horse has even started moving and say oh good god should i pursue so that it will be on record that i ask you and god will say come back and he said i knew it i reject that spirit it can't be god the bible says the path of the job so you were not really serious about inquiring let me tell you how to hear from god be willing to accept any answer as a sign that you trust his will for your life if not your hearing will always be wrong i can tell you 90 percent of our prayer of inquiry we already have our answers what we are largely doing is hoping god agrees with you that's the truth how do i know that the difficulty the way we fight god back after he speaks if you are fortunate and your answer his answer is consistent with what you've always wanted then you now say now i knew it i knew it god should i start that business i already have my 10 million i'm not asking you for money just give me permission and god says go ahead and you rejoice say, i this is the kind of god i want to serve but while you are praying and god says that 10 million is not for you bring it to the king's court you say what did i say no god cannot do this kind of bad thing knowing how nigeria is now this is not god this is a familiar spirit and i curse that spirit god if it's you verify and your first dream becomes somebody that god uses maybe it's even me i will say obey god as he has said you get up and say i hate all these people no i don't <laughs> the prayer of inquiry is a very risky prayer adventure you must love god and trust him to delve into this one because it would disrupt many of your plans but one assurance i leave with you is the kind of glory that will come out of your life when god directs you when he led them when he led them moses said do not let us depart from here let me tell you this sometimes using our frame of mind and our frame of thinking our plans can be so beautiful based on how we've seen it but how many of you know that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts help me that his way is higher than your ways god god's thoughts will always be infinitely better and greater than what you ever imagined but you see one thing with god is that he does not strive with the spirit of man for long there are people today who have lost in business because god told them they pretended they did not hear him when the holy spirit comes to you comes to you and you keep resisting him he will honor you and leave you but for that consequence you can be sure you'll go through it hmm. please ask god questions you don't need to ask god silly questions like um should i wear a black shoe or a white shoe he says the answer is in your brain that one god has given you don't have to make a mockery of god like that but let me tell you i am convinced that in a man's life you will not make more than 10 or 20 destiny defining decisions destiny defining decisions are not many it is at such times when seasons are about to change when certain decisions involve god oh for instance where do i relocate for the next 20 years with my children that's not something to make over coffee destinies will suffer from it am i wasting your time yes who do i marry how many children do i have lord there are five men coming and honestly based on me oh this second one this the kind of potential i'm seeing there is very convincing is that true you've not read of people who turn from grass from uh, what was grace to grass and others who went from grass to grace you would have looked at david if you saw david in the wilderness and you took david 
to your home maybe they will drive david away but that was a king you were driving away honestly let me tell you to be carnally minded truly is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace it is only god who knows the future of men's destinies and there are times you need to lock up yourself you have an opportunity for a great job an oil company and then god is calling you into ministry don't assume you can assume you are called into ministry and reject the oil company and find out you were not called into the fivefold ministry You think I'll say it the other way around. There are times where you are not called. The oil company was what you would have taken. And you reject it just assuming that because you will suffer as if God did not call you. And at a point you say, what is wrong? And God will say, I called you generally, but not to this assignment. Every wrong decision wasting your destiny. Some of you made careless destiny decisions and prayed, may the God of mercy, I'm praying again, may the God of mercy help you. May the God of mercy come through for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I began to sense in my heart that God would have me leave Zaria to Abuja, I loved Zaria so much. I mean, ministry was going exceptionally well. God was doing something within that region that I had not seen since I came there. It was, it, was a, it was a season of phenomenal ministerial strides. How does God come in the midst of nothing? And now says, I struggled with God for three years. And there are prayers where you say, God, confirm. You have asked for trouble. God will confirm it anyway. You will use dreams, a scripture, visions, enemies, friends. Everything will confirm it. God for you. It's interesting to know how I finally camped in Abuja. It was during COVID. I just returned from London where the last sets of people to leave. And I thank God for that. I would have been trapped in that place for three months. I returned back to Abuja preparing to go for a miracle service in Zaria. When they just announced the lockdown. They said nobody is going anywhere. I stayed in Abuja and that was it. You see that now? But I used that opportunity alone. I started praying. And God said, finally, now that I have your attention, this is the new season, finally, we're stepping into. Okay, I started praying. By the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, the map of the globe. Keep praying on it. That is your assignment. I look at myself now and wonder, what if I resisted and say, you don't know what you are doing. You, don't, you are not in Zaria, oh God. I'm the one who knows what is happening. He will leave you. But you will see that you will keep seeing things in the spirit that you are rising. And it will never manifest. For some of you, after this conference, go for a retreat. Bring your major plans for this year and for the next 10 years. Don't assume. Take this as a prophetic instruction. Don't assume. You are about to take decisions that affect your establishment. Don't hurry decisions no is worth it to if you get a decision right it can redeem 20 years you miss out on a decision it's like the hand of the clock it will come back but time will be lost and destiny is measured as a unit of time who is god speaking to please go for a retreat so after this conference thank god for the women go for a retreat lord i'm not going to make this major financial decision major marital decision major ministerial decision i cry unto you the god of all grace speak to me what is the next season of my life church is quiet i'm assuming that the word is entering your spirit praise the name of the lord that's why you can see ordinary people who don't look like it but their decisions are always destiny defining you know why they have mastered the art of engaging this prayer god should i pursue should i overtake should i pursue you will see a building that does not make sense and the spirit of god tells you let's go to the place of prayer fast for two days by the second day god will tell you this building you see a company is coming to buy it in two months buy it now you will sell it for 10 times the price buy it now other people they leave all these carcass but because you had him you can just go with childlike faith 
and even make a deposit just to trap it down two weeks later people are calling you and saying xyz you say i can't believe it is it a scam they say no they need this building whatever price name your price add profit add commit add everything we still want it and someone will look at you and say how how is your life working like this the power of hearing from god this is the model that many of our fathers in the faith taught us they will tell you god said this look at where rccg is for instance you know every time i have the opportunity to pass that place i imagine if god told me to go to that place i will most likely disobey honestly i'm being sincere with you under god i will most likely i'll ask him for forgiveness later on but most likely i would have disobeyed when you see the end point of prophecy it looks glorious but you rewind in your mind and see that bush that's when you see the power of hearing god but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day behind the giant strides that trail believers is obedience to something they are sure god said can i tell you this if you take a step knowing and or believing it was god that led you and god sees the sincerity of your heart even if you are in error he would defend you for his namesake this is one thing i know about god that means if i walk through this led believing that it was a door and believing that it was god that told me to walk there god will carry a door and put there for my sake to make sure that it is not that i trust in him is a risk look at what he told peter if it be thou bid me come peter verify this is an example of such prayer peter said tell me if you are the one and he said come peter took the step of faith but because he was sinking god took responsibility it was at my word and he held him don't be afraid of obeying god there is a system to defend his name in your life sometimes when you become too calculative and scientific okay god you've told me this but let's consider we'll review this again in 2027 it won't work that way there are times you have to trust god and walk on water this is a word for someone you have to trust god and walk on water being unnecessarily scientific will not get you forward he said register the company don't ask questions go and register the company where will i get the contract leave that to god you take a step of faith he says go for a three-day retreat don't say god what for is disobedience you just go there first after the first day you are prayed you are hungry you don't even know what you are doing in that room you just stay there the answer is coming hmm. let me give you the last one You agreed with me this morning to challenge your prayer life. Oh, I hope we're still together. Yes, Let's review. Number one, praying in the spirit. Number two. Yes. Number three, the prayer of inquiry. Can I give you number four? The second, the fourth model of prayer is warfare. 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 This one, I would not even be tempted to delve in. I would just touch it in a hurry else we'll spend the whole day here warfare prayer warfare prayer hmm. <sighs> philippians chapter 1 and verse 19 the assignment of warfare prayer is to establish the realities that have been finished in christ to make them manifest in your life I like how the bible puts it to turn anything to your salvation is the assignment of warfare prayer warfare prayer is not about fighting demons it's not about fighting spirits it's establishing the victory that is already wrought in christ are we together over spirits over situations over circumstances i like the way the bible puts it to turn things for your salvation it says for i know that this shall turn to my salvation how through your prayers and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ i know that this disappointment i know that this attack my god there are things every believer must know i know 
that this family crisis i know that this court case the assignment of warfare is to turn anything to your advantage anything anything to your advantage there are times when you come close to a tree when you don't pluck the fruits on time they start rotting and they fall to the ground but the earth has a unique way of turning everything to the advantage of the soil are we together it now becomes manure something that you see bringing flies and smelling around and the earth is not threatened by it it's a mentality you must have as a believer you must look at everything from the standpoint of god's sovereign plan there is still a way god can get glory from this you were sent away from your work okay the deed has been done what else can be done from this i know that even in the midst of this it can still turn for my salvation this was paul's mentality when he got into prison he would not sit down and say god why me he would use the opportunity in the prison because he knew something he would write letters to the churches and say i hear that you are misbehaving i'm soon coming out of this prison i will come and visit you but in the meantime correct this correct that he was a man who knew that to live is christ and even to die is gain you must know this warfare prayer is predicated on an understanding that all things work together for good please hear me to them that love god not to everybody all things work together for good to them that love god and to them who are the called according to his purposes believe that all things are working for your good truly believe it the disappointment the joblessness including what you think is happening nationally lord i don't know how you do this but because i am the called it must work for my good in the name of jesus christ work for my good and you engage in the place of prayer are we together yeah. scriptural prayer model you may want to correct that i see someone projecting my message scriptural prayer models ends with an s scriptural prayer models please thank you scriptural prayer models warfare now there are people who do not believe in warfare prayer it depends on what you call warfare i personally do not believe in an endless struggle of fighting demons and fighting spirits with no victory in view that becomes an insult to what christ has done on the cross are we together yes however let me assure you that nothing gets established on its own satan and all unclean spirits are stubborn spirits meaning that they have a passion to insist on your pain until you disengage them by light i desire to come to you even i paul once and again he said but satan hindered us knowing that victory has been wrought in christ does not threaten satan is engaging and appropriating that victory that threatens him satan is not afraid of scripture he's afraid of the believer who understands how to engage scripture for your profiting hallelujah he will kill anything he's allowed to kill steal anything he's allowed to steal and you believe me on this destroy anything he's allowed to destroy this is the assignment of warfare prayer haven't done all to stand stand don't assume that god loves your children so much they will be nice wonderful and disciplined people engage in the spirit when you see the cloud when you see the formation of darkness that is the time to take on your priestly regalia and get to the place of prayer the bible says if you turn aside in the day of adversity there is a day in everybody's life called the day of adversity you don't have to be good or bad he informs you pre-informs you so that number one you build prayer strength prayer power for those days and that when those days come you can engage there are times that it looks like all hell have chosen to break loose over you your marriage your children your health are we together now you must know how to engage warfare prayers warfare prayers are serious times of spiritual adventure usually they do not go with you praying alone there are times you need to draw forth the support of other brethren people who love you and understand because you need to engage with power warfare prayer 
this is very important jesus is about to go to the cross and he goes to gethsemane and the bible tells us that he locked up himself and he was praying until the the um the sweat became like blood dripping from him the question is what kind of prayer is that that the word incarnate the very son of god there have been times in my life where i had to engage that kind of prayer let me give you two information about warfare prayer every time seasons are about to change this is the kind of prayer you need to engage in because satan will always start at stand at the corridor of new seasons birthday periods anniversary periods do you know it was during i told you yesterday it was during a man's birthday that a prophet's head went away i have taught my people and trained them that before you celebrate your birthday if your birthday is on the 12th by 9th or 10th or 11 you should have some time of retreat now not many it's not a, it's not a scriptural injunction it's just a prophetic guide i don't believe in people sleeping and snoring themselves into defining seasons no that is a careless christian in my opinion honestly honestly when jesus was born there were reactions in the heavens when jesus was about to be commissioned there were reactions when jesus was about to start the core of his assignment his passion there were reactions when he died there were reactions when he resurrected there were reactions on the day of pentecost there were reactions there are certain kairos moments in our lives where you cannot afford to slumber while men slept there are defining seasons in your life you're about to celebrate your birthday take at least one or two days let the people celebrate you lock yourself and pray especially where you are striking very very notable you know points in life these are survival strategies everybody who wants to live serving the purposes of the kingdom and to walk in victory must understand warfare prayer i will never allow satan come and roam around my vicinity unattended to i have the responsibility of sanitizing my spiritual atmosphere and i must do that without fail he will not respect the fact that you are a man of god that is not his business i think i may have said it here let me say this and then one point and we'll wrap up there are spirits listen please there are spirits that are assigned to believers the moment you get born again there are demonic spirits assigned to sabotage the purposes of god in your life number two there are spirits that are assigned to ministerial offices they are not assigned to individuals they are assigned to whatever of if god has called you to be an intercessor there are spirits that will look for you you don't have to call them they will come they were sent to pursue every intercessor because the devil knows the power of prophetic intercession there are spirits that are assigned to regions so you relocated to lagos welcome but there are spirits it's not only bureau of statistics that are where you came there are spirits who are where you have arrived do you know why they begin to mold you to look like the deformities within that territory if that territory is known for poverty if you like be a multi-millionaire if you don't have spiritual intelligence you can step into that territory and mysteriously things will start going bad it's true it's true one court case after another one trouble after another or they will tell you that three of your relatives need a kidney transplant sixteen thousand per one can you bring out 50 million and all these troubles just plague you in a moment you try to look like the spirit of the region i wish i were lying to you i would have just told you i'm sorry but it's true that also includes overseas so overseas does not have a special closeness to the throne room no it's just that the people are a lot more enlightened than we are now and their policies work a lot better than it does here but as far as the attack of spirits the whole earth lies in wickedness you will find spirits everywhere now imagine the spirits that attack you as a believer then a man of god spirits that attack families 
because there is a prophet there is an apostle that is coming there and you don't even know where the attack is coming from you would have looked at all of these people in the bible and seen the kind of attack that came over them what is the what am i looking for now i'm sure mary would look at her child and say why do they want to kill my baby as for me i've made a covenant with god that for as long as i'm alive i will keep satan far from my life the ministry god has given me and everybody god has brought under my care i take it as a responsibility one thing i can tell you satan is not he's not a friend he's not an advisor there is no discussion you should have with satan he is evil the epitome of evil he will kill anything he's allowed to kill i've been sick before i know what it means to have mysterious infirmities warfare prayers let me give you the final one has god spoken to someone How many have we considered number one praying in the spirit number two declaring scriptures in prayer number three the prayer of inquiry number four warfare prayers number five and this will be the final one there are many models but i'll stop here the prayer of thanksgiving hmm. i will tell you how this prayer works very powerful the prayer of thanksgiving Colossians 4 and verse 2. Let's read together. Ready? One, two, go, please. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. One more time. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. He says, continue in prayer and while you watch, engage. Add to that prayer model thanksgiving let me tell you how this prayer works you convert your request to thanks as an act of faith father i thank you because i am the head and not the tail are you getting that now i thank you because in the name of jesus i am blessed i thank you because i declare that it is well with me so it's it's like you are adding declarations but this time around thanksgiving is what ushers what you are saying lord i give you thanks there are times that your entire prayer scope can just be god i thank you the thanksgiving can come in a song the thanksgiving can come in a dance the thanksgiving can come usually this kind of prayer is backed up with giving please listen you want to engage this prayer model it does not just end by saying thank you usually in the midst of your praying god will place it in your heart to support that prayer with a seed with understanding it's true continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 be anxious for nothing the bible says but in everything by prayer and supplication you see there again with thanksgiving connect thanksgiving to the prayer he said let your request be made known unto god father i thank you because the bible declares many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered them from the, him from them all i thank you because i'm delivered i'm escaped like the bird escapes from the snare of the faller i thank you because my day is blessed i thank you because it is well with me it is well with my children thanksgiving is what proceeds from that prayer and sometimes when you don't have anything to say, you sing your thanks, you dance your thanks, it is still prayer. A powerful prayer model, in fact. Hallelujah. I think it's God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, who said the last digit in the, in the thanks, in the faith equation, is thanksgiving. You know, like you press a number, 80 That two, that last digit is thanksgiving 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 is one of the pillars that sustain joy when you give thanks it can turn mourning to dancing it can turn sorrow to joy because thanksgiving mandates first that you reminisce on the faithfulness of god past 
it's impossible to give thanks without recalling the things he did yesterday in as much as you are trusting him to do something now thanksgiving lord i thank you for what you did yesterday i thank you for my children now they are looking for jobs but i thank you because while they were in secondary school there was a time i did not even know where their school fees would come from lord i give you praise that all these children today that my son is a professor today i remember when he was expelled in the secondary school you have turned my son today to be a preacher i want to give you thanks and it is on account of that i can thank you for what you are already doing in his life lord i thank you for my grandchildren and someone thinks you are just praising god you are actually praying it is a powerful prayer model hallelujah where you bless him from your heart where you cry thanksgiving from your heart you wake up in the morning this is a great day lord i thank you it is only those who are alive that can praise you i want to tell you thank you because you have given me breath i know there are still issues around my life but i take the time to say thank you i take the time to say thank you we're about to pray i hope you'll be able to select at least one of these models and use while we pray if you pray in the spirit alone you are doing malpractice you must practice the remaining four all of us can pray in the spirit that one is the holy spirit engaging <laughs> are we together for someone perhaps you may start with the prayer of thanksgiving thank you for watching this video to the end i know you have been blessed powerfully by that message remember to subscribe to this channel turn on the post notification bell so that each time we release any content at all you'll be notified don't miss out on any of our videos stay tuned on this channel share this message with your families your friends your loved ones and anybody at all that you know keep the faith alive keep the fire burning god bless you see you in our next video cheers